Hey, check out our new test tube app in the iTunes store. Download it, give us a rating, let us know what you think, okay? Okay. Hi, I'm Lauren. And I'm Ben, and this is Brain Stuff. Okay, Lauren, hypothetical situation. Yes, Ben. Okay, so let's say that we're explaining sleep to an alien race that doesn't sleep. And here's what we say. We say, oh, hey, I'm having a great time hanging out with you alien civilization, uh, but pardon me, I have to go be unconscious for eight hours and have vivid hallucinations. Shut down many of my body systems in order to uh, completely lose track of time and space. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds cool, right? I mean, that's okay. I think it's kind of weird. So here's the thing. Everybody's got to sleep, yet we still don't know exactly why. Mm -hmm. uh, but the two of us are going to do our best to crack the case today, right? Oh, that's right. We'll review some theories for why we sleep, what happens when we sleep, and what happens when we don't. And even though we don't 100% know why we sleep, there is all sorts of educated speculation. The most prevalent is that sleep gives our brain a chance to organize and process information, uh, possibly through all those uh, weird dreams that we always tell strangers about. Uh, basically, our brain takes all the sensory stimuli we received while we were awake and decides what to keep and where to file it. Everything else gets trashed or turned into delightful Facebook stories. Right, yeah, and it's even possible that our ability to learn tasks, you know, like learning a language, language or you know, how to ride a bicycle or burn down a yacht or something benefits from sleeping on it, right? It's a process that's better understood after our brain reviews and catalogs it. And while most people would agree that this memory consolidation uh, is, a, is a valid theory, it's tough to pin it down because we all sleep so differently. That's right, and here's another theory. Sleep gives our bodies time to rest and repair. Or uh, how about sleep lowers our energy consumption so that we can conserve the meals that we've eaten? Yes, and other theories delve into the biochemical mechanism of the brain. Lauren, in 2013, a series of experiments on mice showed that cerebral spinal fluid was pumped around their brains while they slept, expelling waste like molecular detritus and toxic proteins into their livers for breaking down. So, do we sleep just to flush the toilet on our cerebral commodes? And thanks for giving me the toilet joke, guys. Uh, well, okay, so other sleep researchers were skeptical of the study that Ben just mentioned, pointing out that there are some really big differences between a mouse's brain and a human's. So, while the answer to why we sleep isn't written in stone, we do all know that when we sleep, both our mind and our body feel refreshed. But how much sleep do we actually need to feel good in the morning? Uh, well, most of us need between uh, seven to nine hours a night, but that changes during different points of your life. Um, for example, a newborn baby might sleep 20 hours a day, but by the time they're three months old, they recognize that circadian rhythm thing of sleeping at night and waking up in the morning hopefully. When you're older, like like senior citizen older, oh, okay. you can probably get by on like uh, six to seven hours a night. And regardless of how long you're asleep, you must experience both REM and non-REM stages to sleep well. That's uh, rapid eye movement, not the band from Athens. A normal person spends 25% of their sleep in REM, with each session lasting between five and 30 minutes. Uh, during this time, our brain speeds up, our eyes and face might twist which in REM because we're dreaming, we need about 90 minutes to complete a full cycle of that REM and non-REM sleep. And researchers think this cycle ties sleep back to our ability to process tasks and memories. Recordings show that many of the same neurons that fire when we're learning are reactivated during REM, consolidating these patterns into permanently wired connections. But don't sleep too much. More than eight hours can lead to or signal depression or even precipitate Parkinson's or heart disease. Of course, if we don't sleep, that's a whole other mess of problems. Right, yeah. Rats will drop dead if they go more than three weeks without sleep. And we, as humans, not just you and I, Lauren, get lethargic and cranky and foggy-headed at first. It's almost like we're intoxicated. We might even nod off into micro-sleep for a few seconds. This is what happens after one or two nights without sleep. By day three, we start hallucinating, we lose the ability to recognize reality. 
And that's if you're really pushing the boundaries of sleep. Um, simply failing to get enough sleep is connected to uh, obesity, high blood pressure, a weakened immune system, heart disease, cancer, and diabetes. So we might try to get by on caffeine or nicotine or other stimulants, and yeah, alcohol is a good sedative, but it doesn't actually provide the sleep we need for all that neural processing. So in the words of the immortal poet Chris Ludicrous Bridges, if you're tired, be quiet and go to sleep. I bet you've had trouble sleeping, or at the very least, hate sleeping as much as we do. Uh, tell us if your problems with sleep line up with what we've shared with you in this video. Mm -hmm. And uh, go ahead and like, subscribe, uh, leave us a comment below where you can tell us this stuff. And you can also check out uh, more videos on the side. These are pretty good, right? Yeah, I, I, like, I like that one. Oh yeah, well that one is one of the best ones. Thank <laughs> you.